celebrate the anniversary of legal marijuana. Up next, edibles. A Canadian couple is free to return home after being detained in Turkey. Climate protest gets violent in London, England. Humber News starts now. Hello, I'm Zainab Zaman coming to you from our newsroom at Humber's North Campus. It's Thursday, October 17th. Here's what's making news this hour. It's the one year anniversary of weed legalization in Canada and edibles are legal for consumption as of today. But weed enthusiasts will have to wait till the end of the year to finally see it on shelves. It's been reported that 60% of purchases across Canada have chosen to buy goods illegally. Humber students were asked their thoughts on all things cannabis. I have two bars of chocolate at home. <laughs> uh, do, you, do you plan on purchasing your edibles from the Ontario Cannabis Store? Are there other places you want to go to? Um, I purchased mine from a store in Vancouver and the shipping is expensive, so I probably will start to purchase from the government as it's cheaper. It most likely will be cheaper, yes. Uh, honestly, it depends because uh, the uh, certain stores uh, have different prices. Uh, I generally find that Ontario stores are a little bit on, on the more expensive side, uh, so I do try to find stuff that are either uh, third party, like, I wouldn't say third party, but like out of, out of the, uh, the, the province. Um, especially just, I guess, in my home neighborhood, the smell is more constant. Even when it was illegal, the smell was there, but now it's day in, day out, and it's quite annoying. Edibles will be available for sale on December 17. U.S. President Donald Trump is facing more scrutiny today as his impeachment inquiry continues. The latest to testify will be former U.S. ambassador with knowledge of Trump's phone call with the Ukrainian president in April of this year. Trump is accused of requesting help from Ukraine. The U.S. ambassador to the European Union, Gordon Sondland, is set to testify behind closed doors. The testimony will be in front of a three-person committee representing the House Intelligence, Foreign Affairs and Oversight Committees. Sondland will cover a variety of complaints about the president and his potential request of Ukraine's interference in the 2020 election. Sondland was initially set to testify last week, but the State Department blocked him from appearing. Trump has repeatedly denied any wronging. U.S. Vice President Mike Pence and Secretary of State Mike Pompeo are in Turkey meeting with Turkish President Erdogan. Pence is expected to urge Erdogan to stop Turkey's military operations in northeast Syria following the threat of U.S. sanctions. On Wednesday, the U.S. House of Representatives, led by Speaker Nancy Pelosi, denounced Trump's pullout and also called for Turkey to cease its assault. The vote more than two to one of the Republicans voted to oppose what the president did probably got to the president uh, because he was shaken up by it. The week-long assault has displayed over 300,000 people from their homes and killed dozens. Trump says his confident Erdogan and Pence will have a successful meeting but warned the sanctions and tariffs would devastate the Turkish economy. A Canadian couple has been released from Turkey after being detained for three months. Halima Mustafa and Ikar Mu were in arrest by the Turkish government in July for suspicion of joining ISIS. The newlywed couple were on vacation trying to find a place to stay as they drove near a human trafficking hotspot before disappearing. Facing terror-related charges, their freedom comes as no surprise. A further investigation will take place to see if the couple were radicalized while being detained. The couple are heading back to Canada while friends and family wait for their return. The federal election race couldn't be any closer with just five days left before election day. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is in Quebec while Scheer, Singh and May scatter across Canada. Conservative leader Andrew Scheer is campaigning in Brampton before making a stop in the city. NDP leader Jagmeet Singh is starting in Welland in Niagara Falls before moving on to Toronto and a rally in Brampton. Green leader Elizabeth May is on Vancouver Island making numerous stops along the highway. This year's election has gained a lot of traction as Election Canada says advanced voting has shown a 25% increase compared to the 2015 election. It looks like Liberals and Conservatives are still tied for first while NDP has gained over 18%. The polls in these final days of the campaign suggest that Canadians will elect a minority government. Andrew Scheer says he will not ask other parties for support if he falls short of winning the majority on Monday. Scheer stated that a Liberal and NDP coalition is something you cannot afford and claimed it would impact taxes and jobs. It seems as if a new Brexit deal has been reached at the last minute and now Britain may be able to peacefully part ways from the EU. 
Leaders from across Europe met up in Brussels to discuss Brexit and try to come to an agreement. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson took to Twitter to describe and share his reaction on the deal in the following tweet. We've got a great new deal that takes back control. Now Parliament should get Brexit done on Saturday so we can move on to other priorities like the cost of living and the NHS violent crime and our environment. In a press conference with British media, Johnson said the new deal was fair to both sides. That this deal uh, represents uh, a very good deal both for the EU and for the UK. And it's a, a reasonable, fair outcome and reflects the uh, large amount of work that's been undertaken uh, by, by both sides. Not everyone wants to support the deal as UK opposition leader Jeremy Corbyn says his party cannot support the deal. And we believe the deal he's proposed is heading Britain in the direction of a deregulated society with a sell-off of national assets to American corporations. So as it stands, we cannot support this deal and will oppose it in Parliament on Saturday. Voters in Great Britain chose to leave the European Union in a referendum in October 2016 with negotiations ongoing for the last three years. Frustrations between climate change activists and angry commuters have boiled over and gotten physical in London, England. This, actually is targeted government. Yeah, this was a part of a wave of civil disobedience launched by Extinction Rebellion. Protesters dis disrupted rail services and unfurled a group banner on top of a stationary train. Commuters grabbed at the sign pulling it down and tried to get the people off of the train and down to the ground. People were able to get onto the train to get on at the protesters. The protester who was filming the event was attacked by angry commuters. He describes his experience. We have a free press and I've been hit in the head, I've been kicked on the floor by a mob. London's mayor Sadiq Khan has condemned Extinction Rebellion, urging them to protest peacefully and de-escalate growing frustrations felt throughout London. Thousands of Barcelona students protested the Supreme Court ruling that jailed nine Catalan separatist leaders for up to 13 years. Unlike protests in the past, the students kept it peaceful. Students marched down Barcelona streets holding homemade signs and banners and chanting independence. These protests are a part of the sentencing by Spain of nine Catalan separatist leaders, including the former deputy leader of the Catalan regional government. He was sentenced for sedition and the misuse of government funds in the Catalan independence referendum in 2017. In a statewide referendum, more than 2 million people voted yes and 177,000 voted no for Catalonia independence. The leading car of the World Solar Challenge in Australia burst into flames 20-50 kilometers away from the finish line. The Dutch team Vattenfall has yet to find the cause of the Luna X fire leaving them stunned. The fire allowed the Belgian team Agoria to take the lead and win them their first victory after 16 years of participation. Driver Tim Van Leeuwen says he smelled something burning and assumed it was the car. Soon after smoke from the car started to pile up, the Nuna X car was damaged a few days prior to the race during a test run, but was quickly repaired by the team. Baton Fall is the seven-time reigning championship, but the fire ruined their chances. A Utah man is lucky to be alive after a police officer saves him from a train wreck. Dash cam footage shows officer Ruben Correa running towards a moving train approaching a parked car on the track. Korea finds an unidentified driver pass out in the vehicle and urgently tries to help him to safety. Korea had mere seconds before the train smashed the car. They both luckily escaped the incident without any injuries. A dust storm is sweeping through towns in Australia. The state of Queensland is being hit by a storm that picked up dust on Australia's east coast. The storm hitting the road at a speed of 89 kilometers per hour is making it difficult for citizens to leave their houses. Life in Darwin is right now today. It's, oh my God, you should see this dust. The Bureau of Meteorology rela released a warning naming the places expected to be hit. Storms can cause serious health affecting to visions and breathing. Australians have been told to avoid all outdoor activities until the storm clears. How do you stop your newspaper from flying away in a dust storm? Use a news anchor. Winds are pretty high here in Toronto today and you might want to have your umbrella on standby because it's looking pretty gloomy. The skies are grey due to the clouds so hopefully the rain holds off. We're going to have a look at what the next three days have in store for us after the break.